Welcome back, this is Matt and this is Matrims Mutterings and we're going to talk about something which has been in the news for the last few weeks and that is Israel Folau's comments about homosexuals. Now those of you who don't know who Israel Folau is, well I don't know how you don't know who he is because he's one of the most famous footballers in the country, he plays rugby union, he used to play for the Broncos, he was one of the best players in the NRL before he left the NRL. He went to the AFL and then found his way to Rugby Union and ever since he's been a stalwart of the Wallabies team. He's played for the Waratahs. He's an incredibly talented athlete but he got himself into real hot trouble because he was asked a question and he gave an honest answer. And that's not something you're supposed to do in today's world, especially on Twitter. So what was the question he was asked? What was God's plan for gay people? And his answer? Hell unless they repent of their sins and turn to God. Now this caused a massive controversy. And when you think about it, it's kind of strange that it did because this is basic Christianity 101. The idea that people who sin and do not repent from their sins, according to the Bible, go to hell. That's basic Christianity 101. That's right at the beginning you learn that sort of stuff. <laughs> This has been Christi basic Christianity for nearly 2,000 years. But the reason it caught such a stir is because you're not supposed to talk about such Christian beliefs in today's climate, especially on places like Twitter or Facebook or places like that, because if you believe these outdated texts, you're a bigot, you're a horrible person, you hate homosexuals, you hate transgender people, you hate this person, you hate that person, when the truth is, easy for our most Christians don't hate anyone. They just happen to believe something which stands against the current values of our day. And the values have shifted very quickly. Just a couple of decades ago, if Izzy Folau had have done this, it wouldn't have gotten anywhere near the same traction, partly because social media didn't exist, but also partly because we've gotten into this situation in the current year, and for the last few years now, where corporations, businesses, organizations like Rugby Australia, the NRL, and Qantas, and if you're a big name brand, you have to come out in support of the current social issues of the day, otherwise you are considered a pariah in social contexts. So the fact that Israel Flau said something which stood against the inclusive and diverse inverted commas message of Rugby Australia means that he's going to cop criticism from a lot of directions. Now, because he's bold, he's stuck by his comments, and maybe he could have made his comments in a much more considered and careful way. But what he said is is basic to what the Bible says. Now, Izzy Flau isn't actually a Christian. He's a oneness Pentecostal, which is sort of a, a branch off from Christianity, which don't really believe in the Trinity and believes in a different kind of salvation and things like that. But still, he just took the plain teaching of what he saw in Scripture and answered this person's question. Now, since then, because of all the... Fur and since then, because of all the backlash and all the criticism that he's got and his meeting with Raylene Castle and all the different people involved with Qantas and ASIC and Rugby Australia and all the people who have criticized him through the media, he's decided to put out his own response and explain why he said what he said. So I thought it might be instructive for us to go through what he said and just comment on it as we go through. Let's, let's see what Izzy Folau has to say. So this is on Player's Voice, which is a website where players can come out and talk about what they believe and the issues that they're going through. And this is what Izzy Flowers said. People's lives are not for me to judge. Only God can do that. I have sinned many times in my life. I take responsibility for those sins and ask for forgiveness through repentance daily. I understand a lot of people won't agree with some of the things I'm about to write. That's absolutely fine in life. You're allowed to disagree. So the way he started off here is really good. And I just want to comment on a couple of things because this basically intersects with two of the main things which I talk about on my channel, freedom of speech and religious values. And that is because I'm a free speech fundamentalist and because I'm a religious person, I'm a minister in a church. I believe that Jesus really did die for our sins. I really believe that he rose from the dead. I believe there's evidence of that and I trust in that for my salvation. Like Izzy Folau, I believe Jesus is the most significant person in history. So. He's done a really good introduction here because he's pointed out it's not for us to judge. God will judge us according to his standard. And he also points out something incredibly significant about Bible teaching where he says, I have sinned many times in my life. I take responsibility for those sins and ask forgiveness through repentance daily. The message of biblical Christianity is simply this, to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. 
The reason Jesus died on the cross for us is because we are all sinners. Izzy Folau is a sinner. Everyone who lives in this world, except for one man, that is Jesus Christ, committed sin. And that one man, that perfect man, paid the penalty for the sins that we did, took our punishment, and achieved salvation for us. That's what Christians believe. So Christianity is not this worldview where we think, oh, we're better than everyone else. It's not the truth at all. What Christianity teaches is that we recognize how sinful we are and our need for a savior. And that's what Izzy is saying here. He knows that he is also a sinner. He's not trying to stand up on a pedestal and say to other people, they're the sinners. He's trying to say that whoever is a sinner needs to repent. But he also says this. I understand a lot of people won't agree with some of the things I'm about to write. That's absolutely, in fi absolutely fine. In life, you're allowed to agree to disagree. This is the fundamental <laughs> basis of freedom of speech. Saying things which other people don't like, and being able to do it and agreeing to disagree. The ABC put up a poll asking if people thought that Izzy, fa Izzy should be punished for what he said. And I was pleased, I was so stoked to see maybe 95 to 99 percent of the people on that post saying no, he should not, he has freedom of speech. My comment was simply this. If you think that there is a line between hate speech and freedom of speech is, you do not know what freedom of speech is and you are an enemy of it. The whole point of protecting freedom of speech is because we all say things that people hate. Because we all find different things hateful. In other words, Izzy Flau is recognizing that we need to live in a society where people can agree to disagree. And yes, we can cop criticism for what we say and for what has been said. And he has copped criticism, but he's allowed to respond, and people are allowed to respond. We shouldn't be trying to take away people's livelihood or punish them with legal means because they say things we don't like. Let's keep reading. But I would like to explain to you what I believe in, how I arrived at these beliefs, and why I will not compromise my faith in Jesus Christ, which is the cornerstone of every single thing in my life. I hope this will provide some context to the discussion that started with my reply to a question asked of me on Instagram two weeks ago. I read the Bible every day. It gives me a sense of peace. I have not been able to find any other area in my life. It gives me direction. It answers my questions. I believe it is a loving gesture to share passages from the Bible with others. I do it all the time when people ask me questions about my faith or things relating to their lives, whether that's in person or on my social media accounts. So let's just pause for a second here. Now, even though Israel Flau doesn't quite believe in Orthodox Christianity, I see the work of God in his life because when God is at work in someone's life, he will constantly direct them back to his word. And, and many Christians have a very simple, just basic trust in God's word, a basic love for God's word, and a desire to hear how God wants them to live. That's all Israel Flau, that's all Izzy is trying to do. He's just trying to hear from God through his word and put it into practice. And he's not going to do that perfectly, and neither would I, and neither would anyone else, including the Pope, because none of us are perfect except Jesus, which takes us back to how Izzy Flau started. Let's keep reading. Two weeks ago, I tore my hamstring quite badly in the opening minutes against the Brumbies. I was told I would be on the sidelines for a month. Finding out that I would miss three or four games so early in the season was disappointing and frustrating, but I accepted the news and started looking ahead. That afternoon, I put up the following Instagram post referring to James 1, 2-4. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials because the testing of your faith produces endurance, so that you may be lacking in nothing. In the comment section of that post, I was asked a question by somebody about what God's plan is for gay people. Now, before we go to see what he says there, let, let's just pause again for a sec. He finds out that he's, towards the beginning of the season, he's facing an injury where he's going to be out for, you know, a few weeks to maybe a month which means that he's not going to be able to get into peak form until a few weeks after that because he's got to get his fitness back. Now, instead of getting depressed, like some athletes do, for example, Greg Inglis went through a deep and dark period of depression last year after facing a season-ending injury, which is understandable when what you love the most is taken away from you and there's nothing you can do about it. Some people feel despondent. Some people fall into despair. But instead... Izzy Folau, because of his belief in scriptures, looked for a greater meaning, and he found it. That we face various kinds of trials in life, and it gave him hope, and so he wanted to share that with other people. Now, but there, because there are so many people out there who are anti-Christian and anti-religion in general, he was asked a question which may have been genuine, it may have been wanting to set up a bit of a fight, 
But this is the question he was asked. What God plan is for gay people? Now he says this, my response to the question is what I believe God's plan is for all sinners. According to my understanding of my Bible teaching, specifically 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor the drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Did you hear that list? There's a lot of sins on that list, not just homosexuality. Christianity is not a religion which wants to pick on homosexuals. I know gay people in my own life, and I love them as human beings. They are people that I get along with, people that I cherish, people that I respect. We can disagree about a way of living, and the Bible tells us that, tells us that that way of living is wrong, but you can still love someone you disagree with, and that's exactly what Jesus told us to do, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That doesn't mean just love people that we agree with, love people we disagree with. The truth is... There are many sins which the Bible calls out, and included in that is the sexually immoral, in other words, pornea or fornication, in other words, sex before marriage, nor idolaters, those who worship other gods, the Bible says are sinful, nor adulterers, those who cheat on their husbands and wives, are consider, you know, in other words, there are a whole bunch of sins that if you do not repent, you continue down them, and you do not believe in Jesus, you will end up in hell. Homosexuality is just one of them, and it happened to be the one that he was specifically asked about. He didn't go out there to target gay people. He was asked about it and he just gave a simple answer from his simple faith. He says, he continues by saying this, I do not know the person who asked the question, but that didn't matter. I believed he was looking for guidance and I answered him honestly and from the heart. I know a lot of people will find that difficult to understand, but I believe the Bible is a truth and sometimes the truth can be difficult to hear. That is so true. We hate hearing the truth, even from people that we love. How often have you gotten upset because a teacher, a friend, a parent, or a loved one has told you the truth about yourself that you did not want to hear? We do not like hearing the truth often. Whether Christian or not, we often do not like valid criticism. I think of it this way. You see, someone who is about to walk into a hole and have the chance to save him, he might be determined to maintain his course and doesn't want to hear what you have to say, but if you don't tell him the truth, as unpopular as it might be, he is going to fall into that hole. What do you do? In this case, we're talking about a sin, as the Bible describes it, not just homosexuality, which I think has been lost on a lot of people. There are many sins outlined in the passage from 1 Corinthians, and I have been guilty of committing some of them myself. No man or woman is different from another. If you sin, which we all do, and do not repent and seek forgiveness, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. As it is written in Acts 2.38, this was said by the Apostle Peter, when he was preaching to the Jewish leaders and many of the Jews after, after Jesus had risen from the dead, and gone to heaven. He says this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I believe when Jesus died on the cross for us, it gave us all the opportunity to accept and believe in him if we wanted to. To enter the kingdom of heaven, though we must try our best to follow his teachings, and when we fall short, to seek his forgiveness. Now we see a little bit here of maybe either Izzy Flau's baby faith or potentially the influence of the denomination which is, which is, as I said, one is Pentecostalism, which places the emphasis of salvation on our works. It's a very works-based belief system because it denies the Trinity. And basically every form of, every form or bra branch off from Christianity which denies the Trinity often leads people to a false version of Jesus which leads them down work salvation. The Bible teaches very clearly that if we want to enter the kingdom of God we must believe in Jesus. We must Repent, which is change our mind about Jesus, change our mind about our sins, and trust in Him. And then He gives us the Holy Spirit and helps us to live His way. Yes, we are to seek to obey Him, but we don't get to heaven based on our obedience. We get to heaven based on His obedience. So I wanted to talk about this because it's really important, because Izzy Flau kind of teaches a little bit of work salvation here. But in a sense, he's encapsulating, in a general sense, what the Bible says. By dying on the cross... It gave us all an opportunity to accept and believe in Jesus if we wanted to. For God so loved the world that he gave us one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus died on the cross for all of us, and if you want to believe, anyone who believes in him will be saved, who so trusts in him. But then he goes on to talk about the work of salvation. But this is really important because what he's trying to say is this. 
We are all fallen. We all needed Jesus. And Jesus was the only one who was perfect. In other words, he's trying to say, he's not picking on people. He was just simply answering a question about a sin, as what something the Bible calls a sin, and what all sinners must do. We all must repent. We all must ask forgiveness. In fact, the Bible says to ask forgiveness daily. And the only way we can get to heaven is we trust Jesus for our salvation. He goes on to say this. It wasn't always this way for me. I grew up in the Mormon church, but like a lot of kids, I didn't really pay all that much attention. I went to church on Sundays because that's what my parents expected. I didn't want to disappoint them. It was box tick. It was box ticking, pretty much. We left the Mormon faith in 2009. As much as I might not have been the most devout follower out there, I always believed in God, so it left a huge void in my life. I tried to fill it with other things, alcohol, women, and sins. I was playing in the NRL at 17 and soon after playing Origin and Test Footy. That opened to me a world of temptation I have never been exposed to before. I had the means to indulge in that, but not the wisdom to understand what it really meant. Often during this period, I felt I was losing control of who I was and what I wanted to be. It was all ego and no humility. But despite living this materialistic life, I still felt empty. Let's pause for a second here. How many professional athletes, not just football players, not just rugby union or rugby league players, how many professional athletes get in trouble because they get too much money too quickly, too much fame too quickly, too much adoration too quickly, they get women thrown at them, they get money thrown at them, they get all sorts of social power thrown at them, they can basically do whatever they want. How many of these guys fall into trouble, do stupid stuff, get caught on drink driving charges or drug charges or some of them beat their girlfriends or beat their wives? Look what Matt Lodge did a couple of years ago while in New York going on that rampage. In other words, football players get into all sorts of trouble. Here's one who sensed himself, who saw himself going down a bad road and he recognized that there was no satisfaction in that lifestyle and so he starts to pull back but because he's religious and he holds a view of the world which many Aussies don't hold he gets slammed more than so many of these other football players and yes I'll give credit to the media they often slam football players who behave badly but here's someone who's married who wants to do the best and who loves people and cares for people he just holds a different opinion and they are slamming him for this. That's just crazy. Let's keep reading. The big change happened with the move to Greater Western Sydney. With one signature, I went from the top of the NRL to the bottom of the AFL. <laughs> it's true, he wasn't very good at AFL. He got a lot of money for it, but he wasn't good at it. I've written before that the reasons why I signed with the Giants, but not so much, that it made, not so much the way it made me feel at the time. I'll be honest. I'll be driving to training most days thinking, what am I, why am I doing this? It kept me up a lot of nights. I was doing what I thought was best for my family, but the reality of the situation that I wasn't very good at new, new sport made me upset. Think about it. He was one of the best NRL players in the world, and he went to being one of the worst AFL players. That's a big drop for an athlete. Athletes want to be the best. That's how they get there. They work hard. They train hard. They sacrifice. They do all that they can to get to the top. And then to make a silly decision and go so far towards the bottom like that must have really brought him low. All I had ever wanted to do in life was play in the NRL. Now I had made a decision to leave that all behind and live a new life to appease other people. It left me emotionally broken. It was around this time I started attending a new church where I experienced God's love for the first time in my life. That's when I started to realize that it was all part of God's plan for me. I had been hiding my inner thoughts and feelings from everyone around me, but God could see into my heart. He had to break me down in order to build me up again into the person he wanted me to be. It all suddenly made sense. I have tried to live my life in God's footsteps ever since I follow his teachings and read the Bible all the time in order to learn and become a better person. Since that happened, I have been at peace and enjoy life with an open, honest heart, which, which is why my faith in Jesus comes first. I would sooner lose everything. Friends, family, possessions, my football career, the lot. And still stand with Jesus and have all those things and not stand beside him. See, this is the part I think that many people in the media, especially on the far left, the atheistic left, not that there is an atheist on the right, but you know, the, the, the anti-God left. This is the part which I don't think a lot of people understand. Those who genuinely believe in Jesus care about that more than anything else. And Izzy Falau displayed this because he told 
Grayling Castle knows in Rugby Australia that he would give up Rugby Union if they wanted him to. And he didn't do this because he had some kind of contract lined up. He said this because he cares more about Jesus and what Jesus says he needs to believe and the witness he needs to be than he cares about all the money, fame, fortune and glory. People like this change the world for better. That's the kind of attitude William Wilberforce had, who helped get rid of slavery in the in British Empire. That's the kind of attitude Mother Teresa had, who gave up everything to serve poor people in Calcutta. That's the kind of outset that so many people throughout history have had, which caused them to achieve great things. You don't have to agree with him, but we should respect that this is a man who genuinely believes in God and genuinely believes in Jesus. This is not someone who just holds to these beliefs for some cultural reason. He went through that phase as a Mormon. He said he left the Mormon church. This is someone who genuinely believes that God loves him. And when you have someone like that, they are willing to go against the grain. There are so many cowards in our media, in our society, who will not go against the grain. There are many cowards in, in the church who are afraid to go against the grain. Izzy Flau has stood up for what he believes, and we need to commend him for that. And for those of you who do not understand it, it's because you have way too narrow a view of the world. God is real, and he really does impact people's lives. And he really does make a difference in people's lives. You need to understand that. He goes on to talk about his meeting with Raylene and the fact that he was going to step down from rugby union. Which we've already talked about that. But let's 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 just come down towards the end of the article. God can see from beginning to end. He says this. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not the type to upset people intentionally. Since my social media posts were publicized, it has been suggested that I am homophobic and bigoted and that I have a problem with gay people. This could not be further from the truth. I fronted the cover of the Star Observer magazine to show my support for the Bingham Cup, which is an international gay rugby competition for both men and women. I believe in inclusion. In my heart, I know I do not have any phobia towards anyone. With everything that has been said and written, many people over the past six months have told me that they think yeah, I am wrong, either to my face or via social media. I won't go into specifics. Some of it has been pretty heavy and from people close to me. But they let it be known that their views differed from mine. I don't have any issue with this. He's a consistent free speech advocate. He is willing to share his views and he's willing to be criticized for his views and allow other people to speak to him. Commend him for this. He is a bold and compassionate person. Look, most Christians believe homosexuality is a sin, but we do not hate homosexuals. In fact, we're commanded to not hate. <laughs> but I know so many genuine Christians who have genuine love for people who have genuine disagreements for them. We need to be able to live in a society where we can agree to disagree with people on lifestyles and still love and respect each other. That is the kind of person Izzy Folau is. It's the kind of person I try to be, and that's the kind of people that made the West great. Every individual in this world is different, and we have all experienced things that have shaped us in unique ways. I don't expect everyone to believe what I believe. That goes for teammates, friends, and even family members, some of whom are gay. I don't pretend to have all the answers in life. It can be difficult making the right decisions. You are always trying to reconcile the truth from the Bible with things you feel inside. But I have faith that God's path is the right one, and that path is outlined in the Bible. I will keep sharing that. One of God's commands is to love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, God loves each and every one of us. He, he just doesn't love the sin we live in. This is a fundamental teaching of Christianity. God loves sinners. He does not love sin. God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his love for people who not just disagreed with him, but were opposed to him. And as Christians, we are called to have that same kind of love. And we seek to do it every day. You may disagree with our views, and that's okay. But we will seek to love you anyway. And we may not do it perfectly, but we will seek to do it. That is what Jesus died for, to give us a chance to be forgiven. If you choose to believe in him, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal of your sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That will enable you to live the life that God has called us to live. In other words, he's recasting... Acts chapter 2 verse 38 here, which we read earlier. God can see from the beginning to end. I can't. There's a big element of trust in that. And sometimes you have to give up the things you really want in order to please God. I trust that he knows what is best for me. 
He knows the future. He knows how it is all meant to play out. At times you can feel alone and drawn out, but Jesus told us that when you stand up for him in this world, you can expect backlash. I find peace in that. As testing as it can be standing up for what you believe in, the Bible tells us it will all be worth it in the end. In other words, what he's saying is this. Come at me. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's saying, come at me. He's saying, I trust Jesus above everything else. If I lose it all, that's okay. Jesus said there would be backlash for standing up for him. And he's willing to do it. I wish there was more people out there who actually believed in the Trinitarian God of the Bible who had this kind of bravery. And I really genuinely believe that Izzy Flowers on the journey towards tr you know, actual trust in Christ. He has a, a genuine belief in the Bible. Now, if you're a non-Christian out there, you might not understand the difference between Christianity and, and offshoots of Christianity which don't have the same view of God and stuff like that. But what you do need to understand is this. Those of us who believe in Jesus and who genuinely believe in Jesus want to do what he says above all else, even when we are hated for it. And I'll admit, often as Christians, we can fall short of being the bold people he has called us to be. But Israel Folau has stepped up and he has said, let me read the last sentence. As testing as it can be standing up for what you believe in, the Bible tells us it will all be worth it in the end. Look, so many people out there out, are non-believers, right? You don't believe what the Bible says. But how many of you get angry at politicians who don't stand up for what they believe in? How many of you get angry at news anchors who don't stand up for what they believe in. How many of you get angry at people you know in your life who don't stand up for what they believe in? Izzy Folau is standing up for what he believes in. And even if you disagree with him, we should commend him for his boldness. I commend him. And I pray that if I have ever put under the same kind of public pressure, I would have the boldness to hold to how I read Jesus' teachings as well. Our God is a great God. And he is a forgiving God. And he wants us to talk about the message of forgiveness and repentance from sins. He wants us to talk about this. He wants us to share it with people. And he wants us to share it with people even when they hate us for it. And he wants, when we responded with hate, we had to respond with love. That's what Izzy Folau is seeking to do. Anyway, I'm going to finish up here. I think what Izzy Folau has done is awesome. I think he probably could have got himself in a little less trouble by starting off a little bit wiser in the way he did at the start. But we all live and we all learn, and he's still pretty young. <laughs> if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please like, comment, rate, share, or subscribe. This is Matt from Matrim's Mutterings, signing off. Catch you later.